important to focus on its purpose in the divine plan. Hey guys, I want to talk about this. This is a live debate that's going on right now. So it's a Dr. Brown debating some guy about the, uh, it says, does the Bible teach pre-tribulation? It's not just about our physical change, but it's the exciting climactic moment in the divine romance where Christ, our bridegroom, comes to fetch his bride so that we might be married, fully united together forever. God designed the Jewish marriage customs to be a picture of the divine romance. Having chosen his bride from eternity, um, Christ is together forever. You, you, you guys ever notice they talk about Christ and the bride and how they're together forever, eternally? So so Christ has a bride. Did, did the mediator between God and man, did he have a bride? No, of course not. We know he didn't, right? So is that talking about a physical quote unquote bride? Of course not. That's why the Bible says that the spirit and the bride say come. So when it's talking about Christ, which Christ is it talking about? A spiritual Christ or is it talking about a, a carnal physical Christ? It's talking about a spiritual Christ because he said together forever. Second Corinthians 4.18 says those things which are seen are temporal. So is, is, is this about temporal life or eternal life, guys? Is God eternal or is God temporal? The things which are seen are temporal. Remember that. And, and you can see flesh and blood. And it says a spirit hath not flesh and blood as you see here that I have. That's why it says we've been all made to drink of that spiritual rock that followed them. And that rock that followed them was, it was Christ. So that's what the Bible is talking about. So you notice this Jesus has a bride. Now this Jesus bride, are those, uh, are, does the bride of Christ, does the bride of Christ have any children? That's the question you have to ask. Well, you know how the man is the head of the body and he's the head, the savior of the body. Jesus is the savior, right? He's the head, the savior of the body. Well, we're all baptized and saved. We're in Christ. We're saved in the bride. We're saved in the bride of Christ. So who are the children of God? The children of God are all those who are in the bride of Christ. Well, wait a minute. Who's the husband to the bride? Oh, that would be Jesus. So Jesus is the, is the husband to the bride who has his children. That makes Jesus, spiritually speaking, the father. Hence, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. We all been baptized by one spirit into one body. Okay? God designed the Jewish marriage customs to be a picture of the divine romance. Having chosen his bride from eternity. Chosen from eternity. He said he had chosen us in him from the foundation of the world. Chosen us in him from the foundation of the world. That's why you look at Isaiah 45, 17. It says, Israel shall be saved in the Lord. Not talking about some carnal temporal thing that you can see guys this this debate's exposing them um christ came to earth to demonstrate his love by dying for us paying the bride price with his blood and then by that's the man jesus christ but is everyone saved because jesus died for them no when do you when, when are you guys when are you born again it says after you heard and believe the gospel of your salvation you're sealed with the holy spirit of promise and it says if any man be in christ is he a is he a is he an old creature or a new creature if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. All things are, are, are as present tense become new. So these guys are trying to tell you the Bible. They're trying to keep that flesh. Why are they trying to keep that flesh? What's the importance of trying to keep that flesh? Remember, a spirit doesn't have flesh and blood. And remember, also doesn't have flesh and bones, nor blood. But remember, the things which are seen are temporal. And it says God is a spirit. And spirit doesn't have flesh and bones, right? And so it also says the children of the flesh aren't the children of God. And it said that was born of flesh is flesh. That was born of spirit is spirit. Right? So the children of the flesh aren't children of God. And the offspring of God are what? Not flesh. So God's a spirit. You must worship him in spirit. The bride is spirit. And those who are saved in Christ are spirit. He's called the father of spirits. By the gospel. He Why? Because God's eternal. His kingdom is eternal. Not seen. That's why it says the kingdom come not with, come not with observation. So... The Bible is very clear on this, guys. But they want to teach you that he's flesh. What's the purpose of teaching that he's flesh? Because when you put flesh on it, you can add a certain color to it. And then you can say, hey, it's prophecy being fulfilled. See how your government ties in with your, with your, with your false church? Your false, all your false religions? He declares his everlasting love, offering us an eternal covenant. When we receive Christ, we're betrothed to him. Listen, listen. When we receive Christ, we're betrothed. So when you receive Christ, well... Is this person born again? Because it says as many as received him gave him power to become the sons of God. Today, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. These guys are claiming he's not even here. But they're like, he's not. Why are they saying he's not here? But yet they're saying when we receive, we receive him, we become betrothed to him. Well, as many as receive him. 
Today, if you hear his voice, my sheep, I know them. They hear my voice, right? And he says what? I give unto them eternal life. Is eternal life carnal in the flesh? No, it's spiritual. And he says they follow me. Follow him how? Is it after the flesh? Of course not. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. It says uh, there's no condemnation of those who are aware. One Lord, one faith, one baptism in Christ who walk not after the what? Walk not after the flesh. See? But after the spirit. The spirit doesn't have flesh and bones. And the betrothal was sealed by the couple, drinking from the same cup, signifying their hearts and lives were now as... We all been made to drink of that spiritual drink, right? That spiritual rock. And that rock that followed them was Christ. One. Then the man told uh, the woman that he must now return to his father's house to make all necessary preparations for their wedding and future life together, such as building a place for them to live. He assured... We're a holy temple built up in the Lord. That's what it's talking about. It's talking about spirit. It says you are lively stones, a spiritual house built up in Christ. You're not talking about the things that men build with their hands, guys. See, it says God doesn't dwell in the temple made with hands, neither does he worship with men's hands. Daughter that he'd surely return to her, for her, and then they'd be together forever. That's exactly what we see at the Last Supper when Jesus offered the cup to his disciples, representing the church, saying, this is the new covenant in my blood. Drink from it, all of you. And then soon after the meal, our bridegroom gave these tender words of assurance in John 14. He said, in my father's house and many places, many dwelling places, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I'll come again and receive you to myself. But where I am, you, there you may be also. And this is the right. So this is Christ speaking as the first fruits. So let me explain. There's Jesus, who's the head, the savior of the body. He's God, the Father. There's the body of Christ. Those are those who are sealed in Christ, because the bride comes in the name of the husband, right? And they're the children who also come in Jesus' name. Everybody comes in the same name, right? So there's the head, the savior of the body. There's the body. And there's those who are sealed, baptized, one Lord, one faith, one baptism in, in the body, saved in the name of who? Christ. The promise of the rapture. He declared that he'd soon return to his father's house, heaven, to prepare a place for us, which he fulfilled in his ascension. Right, because his kingdom is not of this world and this world is darkness and light have no communion with it, which is why it's silly that they're claiming that they're building an eternal kingdom down here. First of all, you know it's a lie because the eternal kingdom doesn't make sense because... There's no eternal kingdom down here that you can see. The Bible says clearly in 2 Corinthians 4, 18, the things which are not seen are eternal. Things which are seen are temporal. But he also promised to return from heaven to receive us to himself so we'd be with him forever. Right. That's why it says Jerusalem above. That's the bride, right? I'll come, I'll show you the bride, the lamb's wife, right? And he took me, what, in the spirit. Why, why in the spirit? Because flesh and blood can't inherit the kingdom of God. To a great and high mountain shall be that holy city, Jerusalem, right? The spirit and the bride say come. And it's talking about Jerusalem above as free as mother was all. So all of us who are born again, we're born again from heaven, not of the earth. Remember, the earth is men are from the dust of the earth. Curses is the ground, right? So the Bible is explaining that the children of the flesh cannot inherit the kingdom of God. So you're a new creature. And then now you're here as a stranger because your, your home, your, your, your kingdom is what? In heaven. So we're here as strangers letting our light shine before men, telling other men to believe the gospel and be born again. See? This is his promise to return for his bride and take her with him to heaven. Otherwise, his promise to prepare dwelling places in heaven would be meaningless. Once the groom made this promise and departed to his father's house, there'd be a time of physical separation during which both bride and groom would keep their hearts pure. There's a time of physical separation because the children of the flesh can't. <laughs> the children of the flesh are children of God. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. What is so hard about these verses, guys? These guys got to include their flesh. They just got to. Looking forward with joyful anticipation to their reunion when all their dreams will be fulfilled. And when the great moment came, when his father gave the signal for the wedding to go ahead, the son would go in joyful procession to fetch his bride. Meanwhile, the bride, who didn't know exactly when her broom would come for her, would eagerly look for his coming, hoping each day would be the great day. She'd prepare her wedding dress in which she'd be presented to him. And the Bible speaks of this being our righteous deeds for Christ. This is uh, our righteous deeds for Christ. 
No, no. You mean it's Christ. For those who are, who are saved by grace through faith who receive the free gift. He talks about us be fruitful and multiply. When you're in a when you're when you're in a when you're in a um, when you're married, you're supposed to be fruitful and multiply. But he's not talking about the flesh because the Bible clearly says, "If you sow into the flesh, you shall of the flesh reap what." He that sows into his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. Children of the flesh aren't children of God. So the deeds are look preach the word, and the word is what the seed. The parable is this: the seed is the word of God. Luke eleven. So it says, one planteth, one water, God giveth the increase. It's God that worketh in you to do and to will of his good pleasure. So it's God, now that we receive the free gift, he says, go out and tell others about the free gift. You know, the gospel, you know, that, that, that small thing that people seem to forget. The gospel by grace through faith. So he's saying, now that you're saved, you receive the free gift. Now I want you to go out and God's going to work in you to, to, to um, do and to will of his good pleasure. And he'll be God speaking in you. That's why it says, since you seek a proof of who? Christ speaking in me is God the work in you to do at the will of his good pleasure. So that's what it's talking about. Be fruitful and multiply. It says the harvest, you know, plant, seed, water, drink, the water that I give, plant, seed, the word of God. Right? One plant that's one water, God giveth the increase. Right? The the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are what? Few. Because there's few who believe, and there's few who are in Christ, and there's few who God's who 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 Christ is is, right? So that's what the Bible's talking about. There's a picture of the present age of the preparation of the bride, where we're called to live holy lives, looking forward to his return. We're we're built up a holy temple in the Lord, guys. He's talking about living holy lives. It, our flesh is as filthy rags cannot please. We're no longer in the flesh. In fact, the Bible says, ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he's none of his. Listen, ye are not in the flesh. But in the spirit, if so be the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not my spirit, he is none of his. Meaning, if you're not saved, you're still a child of flesh. and You're not born again of the father of spirits, which don't have flesh and bones. You're none of his. Like meaning my sheep, I know them. I give unto them eternal life. They shall never perish. Right? Because we pass from death to life. I'm not talking about the flesh. Flesh still dies. That's very evident. So that's why these guys are lying. And thus the rapture is the dramatic romantic moment when the Lord himself comes to where his bride lives and with a shout of joy, he personally lifts her up in his arms and carries her away to his father's house for the wedding. This isn't something he can delegate to his angels. And that's why the classic rap. He can't delegate to his angels. No, it's God working in us. We are the messengers, but who's speaking in us is God that worketh in us. And we are his angels, messengers, spiritual. It's by the spirit, guys. It's not, oh, my carnal fleshly mind. That's what's giving. We're no longer even of the flesh. You see how confused these guys, these guys are having a debate. A passage says the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout. That's the bridegroom shouting for joy. Back is God that worketh in you to do unto will of his good pleasure. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. Not two Lords. Who's the one Lord? Who's the one faith? Where's the one, who's the one baptism? We've all been baptized by one spirit. And who? Who's the head, the savior of the body? Who's the savior? Look up the name for savior in the Bible. Back at the father's house, she'd bathe and change into a wedding dress. A picture of the judgment seat. Of change into the wedding dress. That's why we're clothed in his righteousness of Christ where we're cleansed of our dead works and receive our dead works all the works of your flesh are dead works right that's why it says uh, I saw the dead raised that's that's all the people who aren't saved are dead right that's why he says I come to give life he says well, you believe you pass from what death to life that's why he doesn't dwell in the temple made with hands easy worship with man's hands that's dead works are the works of your flesh right it says it's the self same spirit that worketh all in all our rewards being clothed in glory according to our work and our rewards are what when you preach the gospel and you win someone to christ he that is wise winneth souls well it's who who's who's the wise the only he's the to the to the uh to uh to the lord the lord it's i think it says to the lord eternal immortal invisible the only wise god who's the only wise god guys works she's the so it's not our wisdom is the wisdom of god then presented to her bridegroom as a glorious bride and becomes his wife, after which they spend some special time together to consummate the marriage before. Special. God's not having sex. See, this, this stuff is all written as an allegory. And these guys, they think it's, they're carnal. 
God's not, God doesn't, God's not truly married to some woman. It's all his, his word is the spirit. He says, Jerusalem above is free as mother. He's, it's all, it's all signified language, guys. God doesn't need, see, God is a spirit. God doesn't need some woman. God's not having sex with anybody. These guys are doing this because they want to have this thing. Oh, this carnal. They want to include their flesh. Now they want to make themselves special. Oh, and then the women, blah, blah, blah. Like, it's all, these guys are just liars. Appearing in public again for the marriage feast. The fact Jesus comes especially for his bride to take her to heaven agrees perfectly with the pre-trib rapture. And flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. So how does that work? And how, and if, if he comes to take it, is this going to be eternal Jesus? Because the eternal things are not seen. So how are you going to see the eternal Jesus come back as not seen? I guess he must come in the likeness of sinful flesh, which is that's why it says, since you seek a proof of Christ speaking in me. All of you guys who are saved, you're no longer children of the flesh. That means it's God that worketh in you and it's Christ in you, the hope of glory. Remember that in the Bible? Christ in us, the hope of glory. Right? Right? It's no longer I that live, but Christ that liveth in me. Remember that? Those Bible verses? But there's no room for it in the post-trib scenario where they both have to immediately return to battlefield earth. In fact, much of the meaning and romance of the rapture is lost because there's no time for that, since there's so many other things that have to be done on that day. Revelation 19 confirms the pre-trib scenario, for there we see the glorious bride already in heaven before the second coming. Only now she's his wife. Ver That's because the works were finished from the foundation of the world, guys. See, since it's, no, it's not of this world, all, everybody who's born again are born from where? Heaven. God finished his work. He says, he, he says uh, man was made on the sixth day, and all men are sinners. And he says on the seventh day, he rested. And as he said, look, now you who are man, carnal, with a, with a, uh, uh, who, who, who are dead, because Adam and Eve, and Adam all die. He's saying now you need to believe and when you believe the new creature who is actually already made, right? Who's in heaven already. Um, that's what he's talking about. He says, I'll put a new spirit in you. And so that, that new spirit is the new creature, right? But that's that new creature is already created. And so he's saying, that's why it's like this thing, these things are being fulfilled, but it's just that these, these works were finished from the foundation of the world. That's what the Bible clearly says. And, and he's like, well, how can it already be? Because the seed of Adam doesn't bring forth anything but the same thing it does. He that sows into this flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. And then Adam all die and Christ all, all are made alive. So it's, it's basically explained to you the lineage of man is all corrupt seed. And then there's the seed of God, the word of God, the incorruptible word of God that liveth and abideth forever. Well, it liveth and abideth forever. Things which are not seen are eternal. God is called the father of spirits and spirits don't have flesh and bones. Verse 7. Let's be glad and rejoice and give him glory for the marriage of the Lamb has come, has happened, and his wife has made herself ready. And to her it was granted to be arrayed in fine linen, clean and bright. The linen is what? The righteousness of the saints. But who's right, being found in him having not my own righteousness? The, the, the children of God are in the bride and we've been found in him having not our own righteousness clothed in his what? Righteousness. For the fine linen is the righteous acts of the saints. The fine linen is the righteous acts of the saints. This guy, he trying to steal the glory. It's God that worketh in us, guys. He needs to clarify because these people are gonna believe, oh, you get work, you gotta work for salvation. No, you work to save others. God works in you to save others, but salvation is free, a gift that you receive by grace through faith, by just believing in God. What must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Faith is not of the law. Then the marriage supper is announced, which is about to take place on earth. Then this same bride, who's been identified, just been identified by her fine linen, clean and bright, is seen as returning to earth in with Christ in verse 14. As, because exactly. We are the bride, we are the bride of Christ, right? Right? I espouse you to one bride, one I espouse you to one husband, even Christ. And he's saying, I never leave you nor forsake you. We, the body of Christ, the, the, you know, the husband's the head, the savior of the body, right? He's the head, the savior of the body. The body's the bride and the bride has the children and they're together because remember he tells, it says, you know, um, it's not good for a man to be separated from a woman. Well, the God's not hypocrite. He's saying, I'm with you. It's, it's God that speaketh in the bride. We are to be silent 
that you know how the woman's not to, to be silent in the quote unquote church in the quote unquote body spiritually speaking is talking about and it's saying look it's god who's who's working in it that's why it says it's the spirit that beareth witness the spirit is truth it's not oh the spirits so it's, it's god that worketh in us since you seek a proof of christ speaking in me it's not me i the, the bride's not to speak the children aren't to speak the the head is is the one who speaks and that's why it says out of the heart the mouth speaketh and that's why it says uh, let it be the hidden man of the heart right since you seek a proof of Christ speaking in me in the heart of the bride is the is the, the husband because it says the armies in heaven clothed in fine linen white and clean followed him on white horses right and it also says that uh, we wrestle not with flesh and blood and it also says our weapons are not carnal and it also says Put on the full armor of God, the helmet of salvation, the, the breastplate of righteousness, shot about with the gospel, uh, feet shot about with the gospel of peace, girded up in um, uh, uh, the sword, which is the word of God, and, um, you know, several other things, you know, uh, girded about with, uh, what is it, shot it about with the, right? it's the helmet of salvation, breastplate of righteousness, feet shot with the gospel of peace, the sword the sword, which is the word of God. And that sword is destroying the enemy. Well, who's the enemy? Death. Therefore, the rapture of the bride must have taken place sometime well before the second coming. Exactly, because it's it's all from the, the spirit. We, we've been sanctified by by word, right? We're all those who are sealed and sanctified in the word, the body. You know how you have a book and they say, oh, you have a body of works in a book. You know how they write in a book and they say, oh, it's your body. of." No, it's they talk about books. They talk about your body of quote unquote works in the book about books and literature. And then there's quote unquote subject line. Where we're no longer subject to death. And then there's a heading, right? And then there's an author. There's a name who authorizes this. He's the author and finisher of our salvation. The alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end. You search the scriptures because in them you think that you have life. But they are they who speak of who? Me, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. And Revelation 4 tells us exactly when this happens. John's called up to heaven by a voice like a trumpet saying, come up here and I'll show you things which must take place after this. Right, because Clearly... he's saying the works are finished from the foundation where he said, and now I'm going to show you, I'm going to reveal to you the prophecy which is fulfilled in Christ. That's what people, see, you're living in a temporal world, but those who have eternal, eternal life, God's already finished his works. So the eternal creatures are already created. But these things are being fulfilled. The people who are going to believe are going to believe. People who are not going to believe are not going to believe. All flesh will go back to the dust. The Bible talks about that. Flesh is just going to go back to the dust. And people are going to be, where's the sign of his coming? And they're like, when, 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 when were you here, Lord? And it says right there in the book, it says, that that you've done to the least of these, my brother, you've done it unto me. He says, I was hungry, you gave me no bread. He's talking about the bread of life, him. He's talking about I was thirsty, you gave me no water. He's talking about him. He's talking about he's the, he's the living water. I was in prison, you did not visit me. What do you mean visit him, visit you? Lo, I stand at the door and knock. What do you mean prison? Oh, the bondage of sin and death. So the Bible's explaining these things. It's spiritually designed, it's discerned. These guys, mm, I don't get it. He's about to be shown a future time and the following chapters make it clear. It's the tribulation in heaven Right, he's talking about the tribulation because men's hearts were tried remember and they saw the, 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 the Fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. They saw it. They was uh, Desired it for food and to give one knowledge and they partook of it. Their hearts were tried They partook of it the day that thou thou should truly die And Adam all died. He corrupted themselves in the whole earth Right? Separation, right? And what? In Adam all die. And hence, you sow into the flesh, you shall the flesh reap corruption. So that's corrupt seed. Like the world is darkness, light has no communion. My kingdom is not of this world, children of the flesh are from God. And it's explaining that it's just all those who believe the gospel who are the new creatures in Christ, born of the word of God. Remember, the word of God doesn't come from the earth, the, the dust of the earth, it comes from heaven. Jerusalem above, it's free as the mother of us all. Sanctify me by thy word, thy word true, born again of incorruptible seed by the word of God that liveth and abideth forever. Heaven, just before the tribulation in verse 4, he sees 24 elders sitting on 24 thrones, clothed in white robes, with crowns. Anytime you see clothed in white, white robes, what is it talking about, guys? Right? 
because we have that righteousness, right? It's not 24. How many, how many, how many hours are in a day? How many hours are in the night? Do we lose, though we are here in the dark world and let our light shine before men, they may glorify our fathers. Though we are here in this world of darkness, we don't lose, quote unquote, our righteousness because we're clothed in him. But we're not of this world. 24. We're children of the day. We're the 12, quote unquote, unquote, 12 disciples as many as are led by the spirit who are true disciples. Those who are led by the flesh, who are still children of the flesh, they're not true disciples. Right? Crowns of gold on their head. Now, whenever the term elder is used in the Bible elsewhere, it refers to men who, by reason of their maturity, are leaders. In fact, it's a standard term for church leaders. They're identified... See, this is where they do the graph for power. See, remember, it's Christ in us, the hope of glory. It's Christ in all of us. It's God that we're going to... Is it like, oh, there's a bigger God than you and a smaller God? No, same God. It's the same spirit, self-same spirit that worketh all in all. Right, also by, by thrones, white robes, and crowns, which are the very things pro promised to the overcomers of the church age in the pre... Overcomers of the church age. These guys, see, see how they try to divide... Uh, this the church. You know, why is there a church age? Because he, he's got to reinforce the lie that the church is not the same as, as quote, Israel. That, that's why he's telling that lie. Jerusalem above is free as mother of us, of us all. Galatians 4.26, guys. So they're trying to tell you you're not a Jew. But the Bible says, look, a Jew is not one who's one outwardly, but a Jew is one who is inwardly circumcision by the heart in the spirit. Right? If you're in the spirit, you're not no longer the flesh. This is why the Bible says we are the circumcision which worship God in spirit and rejoice where? In Christ, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. That's the body. That's Jerusalem above. It's free as mother of us all. And have no confidence in the flesh. Children of the flesh, these are not the children of God. Well, the Bible is explaining, yeah, I know there's a fake Israel and a fake Jerusalem. That's the whole world. These guys are going to claim that they're it because then they're going to try to make it racial and say they're a chosen race. That's just lies. Lies, lies, lies. He's rejected all flesh. I don't care what color your flesh is. It's real rejected. That house will fall. And when that has, since that house will go back to the dust, that house, which is your body, your temple, that will fall. There will not be one stone left upon another. You can try to stand on the shoulders of your quote unquote forefathers. And guess what? It's all going to go back to the dust. It will be laid even with the ground. Previous chapter, chapter three. And these they must have received at the judgment seat of Christ. So these are the church. They receive that the judgment seat of Christ. What? Well, we're already con people are condemned because they believe not, right? You're already condemned because you believe not, and you're not going to be justified by the law. So, what's the judgment? Oh, you've been declared righteousness. You have the imputed righteousness being found in Him, having not my own righteousness. You've been declared righteous. That's why it says we're clothed in His right. That's why He's talking about fine linen, which is the righteousness of the saints. He's like, oh, that's the good works, because this this guy obviously believes in that he's got to work. To, to get salvation. He doesn't believe it's a free gift, guys. That's why he's preaching this, this carnal this carnal religion of lies and race. It's basically racism. Because if he truly believed the truth, he would be like, hey, I just want to clarify, uh, Dr. Brown, you're not, you're not really a Jew. <laughs> no one is, according to the flesh. That's already been raptured. Also, elders... Yeah, because we're from heaven. We're not of this world. We have a sticker. They don't even know what it means. Not of this world. What does that mean? I don't know is hardly an appropriate name for angels because they're all the same age. <laughs> they're all the same age. You know why they're all the same age, guys? Because when God spoke it, it was done. Right? It's by once he already spoke. He said he, he, he finished his works. These works which are finished from the foundation of the world. And it's done. It's, it's hard for these guys to grasp it, right? Because they're trying to include their flesh and they, and they really believe they're doing some works in their flesh. They're like, well, I'm doing some great things for God. Look at all the books. The, the, look at the mirage of the, the, the background, fake background of facade of books that he has there. They, they really want to portray themselves as learned and scholarly and do you speak the language? They don't understand it's spiritually discerned. The carnal mind is at enmity with God and cannot please him. It's crazy. That's why it says the spirit, remember, the spirit, the head, not the carnal mind and the bride. So at the start of the head, it leads the bride, the spirit and the bride. As many as are led by the what? Spirit. 
the tribulation, the church is already in heaven, represented by the 24 elders, as confirmed by their song to Christ in... Right, and so it talked about tribulation, it says men, talking about tried by fire, right? Because it says men burn with lust from their heart. It's not, it's not, it's not a carnal temptation. To, to, no, see, no flesh is going to, flesh has already failed. And all flesh is going to perish. So what's the tribulation, guys? Well, do you, do you thirst after righteousness? You know how people say in the, in, in these, in the modern day vernacular, you're thirsty. He's acting too thirsty. Well, it's talking about people who don't try to justify themselves before God. They're not thinking they're elevated. Oh, I thank God I'm not like other men. They understand it's by grace through faith, not by where there's no works that they can do in their flesh. That in their flesh dwells no good thing. And they simply believe by grace through faith. They're believing on God to save them, who is the Savior. And they, they understand that God's not a man, that he should lie to the son of man, that he should repent. They're understanding that God's a spirit and children of the flesh are not children of God. They're, under, they're believing the gospel that it's a free gift, not of works that any man should boast, right? Being found in him, having not their own righteousness. So we understand that. So there's, that's why we're like, this guy is like trying to include works, the flesh, you know, everything's carnal. Because th th these guys are hand in hand with the gov. Chapter 5, verse 9. You are worthy to take the scroll and open its seals for you as... You know, that's because we have to we are we died to the old man now we're new creatures in Christ and it's God that works in us that's who's worthy right he that laid it down his life for my name's sake right you're right your, your, your life your carnal life your your, your temporal life it's, what, what are you trying to save you can't keep it anyway it's, it's dumb that's why I talked about what they think is foolish which is they think the gospel's foolish. And we're saying, no, you're foolish because all the stuff that you get in this world, you can't keep it. Slain and have redeemed us to God by your blood out of every tribe, tongue, people, and nation. So Exactly. Everybody all around the world preached the word in season, out of season. The gospel's going throughout. People believe and they're longer, no longer children of the flesh. And we're all who said, look, you know what? Under the law, no one's going to be justified. And so... God is righteous in what being a judge and saying, look, nobody's going to be justified by the law because there's not a just man upon earth that's not to do good. So you got to die to self and then you have the righteousness of God, which is which is God's a spirit. It's not some righteousness of the flesh. It's silly. It seems that they represent the whole church from every nation. Now of course they represent the, the whole church from every nation because, <laughs> because it's 12 hours in a day. These are the. There's 12 hours. We don't, it says we walk in the day, not in the night. We're the children of the light, not in the night. That's why it's 12. But then there's also 12 hours in the night. Those are people who are still in darkness, right? But since we, we are here in this dark world preaching what the word, we, we always have the right. We have our light. Because you, when you're in darkness, that's when you need light, guys. <laughs> when you're in darkness. But we who are saved, who are seated in heavenly places in Jerusalem where there is no night. Because who's our light? God is our light. We don't need, we don't, we, you know, the, the, we don't need the sun or the moon or any of that kind of stuff. We have our light. This world sits in darkness. It needs these things because it's, without it, it's darkness. Now, there is a manuscript issue in this verse. Where, should it be translated redeemed us or redeemed them? And there's a similar issue in verse 10 as well. But the evidence in verse, for verse 9 is very much in favor of redeemed us. In fact, 23 out of 24 of the 24 manuscripts say us. And the only exception is Alexandrinus. And in that case, the word is missing altogether. It doesn't say them. It just says nothing. Even the oldest manuscript, Sinaiticus, and the other primary manuscripts has, says us. So if we follow the manuscript evidence for verse 9, these 20... When these guys start talking about the manuscript, you know that there's an agenda. Just like when they change, they put in the Bible, chosen race. You know that's a lie. There's no such thing as a chosen race because children of the flesh aren't even children of God. Children of the flesh, skin is part of the flesh. And so how can you be chosen when God says he's rejected? You, you, you may have been chosen. The man, Jesus says, have I not chosen you 12? One is a, one is a devil. One because they one believe not. But you're not chosen of God, sealed and sanctified by the spirit. Because you, if you're not born again, he said he had chosen us in him. You're not in Christ until you're born again, baptized. You may be in Christ. He's a new creature. 24 elders sing, you have redeemed us to God by your blood out of every tribe, tongue, people, and nation. And this proves that the church is already in heaven at the start of the tribulation. Exactly. 
because all men have failed and it's only those who are the word of God and never fails. We're born again by the word of God, which never failed. We, we are conquerors by his word. Now, the action in heaven in chapter five centers on the scroll with seven seals, the title deed of the earth and how the lamb alone is worthy to open it, to prove his right to take the title deed of the earth. Oh, that's what, but that's why he promised. Look, here's the land that's promised to all the children of the flesh who call themselves things that they're not circumcision made by hands. The, the, you do have the title deed of this earth. You will inherit this gr earth, the grave and, and, and worms will eat your flesh. That's the, that's what you're going to get. That's what you're going to corruption. Remember he that's sold into the flesh is of the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. Remember corruption cannot inherit in corruption. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. You will inherit this earth and the worms will, again, the worms will eat your flesh. So there you go. You know, you know what they talk about? Wormwood, wormwood. Possession of the earth and judge all who rub. Wormwood, dead trees, not the tree of life. Rebel against his rule. And then in Revelation 6, he opens the first six seals, releasing judgments on the earth. And this proves that the whole tribulation is a time of divine judgment, which is why a better name for it really is the day of the Lord. The judgments are unfolded through seven seals, seven trumpets and seven bowls of wrath, all initiated from heaven. God's wrath doesn't start with the bowls of wrath because we're told that in them the wrath of God is completed. Following the breaking of the seals, we see Antichrist going forth to conquer. Bro if you're not for me, you're against me. He does not gather with me. We're gathered where, guys? In Christ. One, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. We can go on and on about this. These guys don't understand biblical prophecy. Look, all things are fulfilled in Christ. Look, you got to be born again. All of sin to come short of the glory of God. When it was asked, what must I do to save to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ? There's one God. His name is Jesus. He's a spirit. God's a spirit. And spirits don't have flesh and bones. And one mediator between God and man. The man, Christ Jesus. Two separate beings. One is God, one's a mediator. One's flesh, one's spirit. Spirits don't have flesh and bones. So that's what you need to understand. Things which are seen are temporal. Things which are not seen are eternal. It should be pretty easy to figure out that God's a spirit. And if you have eternal life, which Jesus said, my sheep, I give it to them eternal life. You can't see eternal life. That should verify children of the flesh aren't children of God. And since he says we have an, an eternal inheritance, an eternal kingdom, and you can see this world, that ties also into, oh, the kingdom come not with observation. My kingdom is not of this world. This world is darkness, light, have no communion. So you got to believe that Christ, the man, died for our sins. He was buried. He rose again the third day. Who raised him from the dead? God, who's a spirit. He says, quickened him. Raised him from the dead. God raised him from the dead. That's just to show, to put the devil to an open shame, to show that God has the power over death. But the children of the flesh aren't children of God. It says he had quickened our mortal bodies. Even though we're no longer children of the flesh, we still have our flesh. Why? Because how else are you going to go as an eternal being who's no longer a child of flesh and preach the word in season out of season? You have to preach it so people can believe it. So that's why we're here. That's our mission. But we're no longer even of this world. That's why Stephen, when he was stoned, called upon God, said, Lord Jesus, receive my what? Spirit. Saving some with fear, pulling from the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. Our flesh will stay right here because it's corrupt. Right? And corruption cannot inherit in corruption. So he, these guys don't believe they have eternal life now. Right? Because you, you believe that so you pass from death to life. So either you have eternal life now or you don't. Okay? That is the whole point. So I'm going to let it go at that. Look, it's a free gift, not of works that any man should boast. Uh, God is wise. People are trying to gain God, trying to uh, manipulate his word for filthy lucre's sake. And look, it's all foolish, guys, because no matter what you do in this world, I don't care how rich and how wealthy you are, I don't care how many kids you have and how beautiful you think they are. History has proven. I got a statistic for you. You want some science? Not falsely so-called. A hundred out of a hundred percent of people die. Flesh dies. So that tells you something. That means they couldn't keep their wealth. They couldn't keep their gold. They couldn't keep their children. They were helpless against the enemy. So all these guys who think they're so great in their power and all this kind of stuff, and they're calling all these things and faking prophecy. Well, guess what? The thing that they're bringing forth which Jesus said, you are of your father, the devil, and the works of your father, you will do is a murder from the beginning and abode not in the what? In the truth, right? It's the spirit that bears witness. The spirit is truth. You're not in the spirit. You're not in the flesh, but in the spirit. And so be the spirit of God dwelling. You know, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he's none of his. He said, the works of your father, you will do is a murder from the beginning and abode not in truth. They who bring forth death through war with their carnal weapons, guess what? Death is going to find them out too.
they can they can somehow get the tanks get into their bunkers and i don't care how big the bunker is i don't care how good the cocoa food is all the weapons that they're using against us guess what they're going to come back on them so de- they're bringing forth death but then death's going to find them out too so they they can't stop that roaring lion they can't stop the lion the lion's going to make it in their bunker they think oh i locked the lion out no no the lion's going to get you too so that's what i'm telling you get the eternal free gift of eternal life by believing the, the, the gospel by grace through faith just say believe on the lord jesus christ and thou shalt be saved it, it, it it's not of works lest any man should what boast i could that's like someone saying i can boast before god that oh i did this i did that i i, I didn't sin no you offend one part of the law you offend it all he that seeketh to keep the law should must keep the whole law and says by the law shall no flesh be justified so it's got to be a free gift and that's why these guys are here talking about the flesh talking about works they're mocking god they're mocking the idea of god being a spirit because they want god to be flesh they want him to be a certain color they want to rule in this world they want to have riches in this world and these things which are seen are temples second corinthians 4 18 we look not for the things which are seen but for the things which are not seen for the things which are seen are temporal the things which are not seen are eternal god's eternal his kingdom's eternal his children have eternal life this world is darkness you can see it it's all temporal all right praise my lord and savior jesus christ king of kings lord and lords amen